Hi there, I'm David Bush and welcome to Bush History. I'm taking a look at every president in United States history from George Washington to the present day in a series I call The Presidents. You can get more information at www.bushhistory.net in terms of more details and more videos on any one of these topics. Let's take a look at George Bush. George Bush, this is George H. Bush. George H. Bush, 41st President of the United States. His Vice President was Dan Quayle. Political party is Republican, term of office 1989 to 1993, so he's a one-term president. Who came before him and after him? Ronald Reagan was Republican who preceded him, and Bill Clinton was a Democrat who followed him. So George Bush was between two rock stars, Ronald Reagan and Bill Clinton. And the unusual circumstance surrounding his ascent to the presidency? Not really. It's unusual to have a... Um, a two-term president from one party and then have another president who belongs to the same party follow him. But people liked Ronald Reagan in huge numbers. And it was thought that George Bush's presidency would be a continuation of Ronald Reagan's presidency. Plus, he ran against a pretty weak candidate, a guy by the name of Michael Dukakis, who'd been governor of Massachusetts. Anyway, so he becomes president, people thinking that we're going to have a continuation of the Reagan policies. Any catchphrases? A big one. Read my lips. No new taxes. And that would haunt him because he will raise taxes. And he called it my thousand points of light. As he looked up at the stars, he said that was volunteerism in America. A thousand points of light. When he left office, was it by choice, defeat, natural death, etc.? He served one term. And during that term, he actually won a war. He won the Persian Gulf War against Saddam Hussein. But he also went back on his promise not to raise taxes. And people vote on election day, they go into the booth, they vote with their wallets more than anything else. And they were really annoyed that he, rose, that he raised tax. He had to. Ronald Reagan left him a huge budget debt and deficit. But nevertheless, nevertheless, people didn't forget his promise. That read my lips part, it cost him. Domestic issues, cornerstones. He, it was believed he continued Reagan's policies, but the debt de deficit and business failures uh, undermined him, and we have the Gulf War. In 1989, we have the savings and loan crisis and bailout. Savings and loans are not banks. They're small institutions that are in local communities, and they basically lend money to the community for business development and for private development. Well, they weren't regulated well, and they ran into all kinds of problems while Bush was president, and that meant that they would have to be bailed out or people would lose a lot of money. It cost $300 billion. His thousand points of light, again, encouraged volunteerism, and he fought with Republicans about raising tax, and ultimately it will raise tax. In 1990, announced he would raise a broad spectrum of taxes. Not good for him. The Americans with Disabilities Act, known as the ADA, was put into effect. A continuation of this idea that goes all the way back to 94-142 where we were going to educate children with disabilities. We just become a much better nation at these kinds of things and George Bush is certainly a big part of that with the American Disability Act. In 1992, poverty is a 14 percent rate which is incredible. So Bush is not solving the problem either. His approval rating is 34 percent in election year in 1992. You're not going to win the presidency with a 34% approval rate, and he loses to Bill Clinton. And this is the read my lips quote, and you can click on that link and get that. Foreign policy. Cornerstones, well, the Berlin Wall is going to come down. Unification of Germany, the breakup of the Soviet Union, and the Persian Gulf War. In 1989, um, he gives all kinds of humanitarian aid to Nicaragua. This is on the heels of the whole Nicaraguan ongoing revolution. He puts a ban on the import of semi-automatic weapons. We invade Panama to get Manuel Noriega, who we thought was a major part of drug dealings in Central America. And the Berlin Wall will come down in 1989. Many people think it was Ronald Reagan, it was George Bush. It wasn't Reagan's fault, it wasn't Bush's fault, it was all the presidents who fought the Cold War, but it happens on Bush's watch. In 1990, the sanctions against Nicaragua are lifted. He passed the Immigration Act of 1990, which eases all kinds of quotas and immigration restrictions. In 1991, we get the START Treaty, another treaty with the Soviet Union to do away with nuclear weapons. So George Bush had a pretty productive presidency. Unfortunately, that read my lips thing really turned around and bit him. If you want to see a discussion on Iraq, click on this link and you get George Bush's ideas on Iraq. Anyway, 
For now, I'm David Bush, and this is Bush History, and that's George Bush. We'll see you soon. Bye.